Okay, so we've got the lighting plan. Well, pretty much all set, at least. Um, initially, we know where everything is gonna go, and tentatively, so with that all set, I think what I wanna do now is we're gonna actually prep the parts, and we're gonna paint them. What I'm gonna do, um, I don't know a lot about 3D printing. I don't think there's any release agent, but from what I gather, these are, I, I, I don't know, I'm not gonna speculate. But anyway, I'm gonna wash these in uh, soapy water. I'm not gonna make the water hot though, because this is not plastic. So let's get some of the, the parts. Let me see the nacelles. What I'm gonna do, is I think we're gonna paint them all first. Let me show you the secondary hull. You can see where the windows are gonna be. I mean, the windows look really great. I was worried about the uh, having little guides on where to drill, but these look really nice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take them, take all the parts over to the sink. I'm not gonna do the, um, I'm not gonna do the clear parts because they're kind of fragile and delicate. So I'm gonna kind of leave those for now. But we're gonna wash. Let's see. You got the nacelle pylons. We've got the the nacelles. We've got the secondary hull. And the way that the model's made, we got the bottom of the ship. And I think this is gonna be for the saucer pylon. And we got the other nacelle pylons. And I think the only other thing that we need from the clear parts, yeah, because they have a shuttle bay in there. So let's get that out. There. And like I said, we got the clear parts. Um, I was having the only issue that I had with them was they were a little bit, they were a little bit tacky. But according to the website, they said if they're a little bit tacky, what you do is you just put them in the sun for a little while, and the tackiness is kind of subsided. But these are still kind of real fragile parts, so I'm not going to. Uh, wash them Well, I guess it, it couldn't hurt <laughs> Yeah, I guess it couldn't hurt all right, we're gonna wash everything Yeah, the sensodone and the only thing that I'm gonna leave and I actually didn't know what this was and they had told me on the website, um, this is actually the shuttlecraft. If you guys get this model and you see this and you're not sure what it is, this is the shuttlecraft that Admiral Riker, uh, excuse me, Captain Riker and Admiral Picard went to the Titan in. So that's a pretty cool little bonus. All right, <clears throat> let's put that aside. Let's make sure I got all the parts. Oh, see, we got another nacelle pylon. And we've got just the instructions and the decals. All right. So they packed the model really well, but I want to get the packaging out and we're just going to leave the model parts in it. So let's put the model parts back in and we're going to take them over to the sink and we're going to prep them. We're going to wash them, rinse them, and we're going to let them dry and then they'll be ready to paint.
Okay, so they're all washed. Nice silky water. Lukewarm, not hot, not cold. We get all the pieces light out and we gotta let them dry really well. And when they dry, then we can put the primer on. But until then, we gotta wait to, for them to be nice and dry. Okay, so all the pots are nice and dry. And I've got them on a newspaper outside. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the inside of the parts first to light block. And I'm gonna use the Rust-Oleum, the, uh, the paint and the primer, and that's gonna be a matte finish. And what we're gonna do, it's pretty breezy out here, so what I did was I used candles <laughs> to actually weight down the paper. You can see, we're not gonna put a ton of paint, we're just gonna, we're just gonna coat it. So let's start by doing the cells. Just like that. And we can do the cell pylons. as well as the uh, saucer pylon. We got the shuttle bay. The inside of the bottom of the secondary hull. And finally, the secondary hull itself. And let's do the primary hull. There. Now we're gonna let this dry. Again, it's the Rust-Oleum. And this has the primer and the paint in it. So let's this uh, let's wait for this to dry and I'll show you guys what it looks like. I don't think we're gonna need more than one coat. When this is dry, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the, um, the outside of the ship with the black as well. And then we can think about doing the chrome paint on the inside. That way there we can prepare all the parts um, for the lighting as well. Okay, so it's been about a little more than an hour. You can see it's drying pretty nicely. I think what we can do is we can actually flip it over now and we can do the outside of the ship. Okay, so it's been a couple hours, and you can see the, um, the paint. 
is dry. It's still just a little bit tacky. So what I think I'm going to do is we're not going to paint any more. Um, I'm actually going to bring it in and we're going to let the paint set. All right, so I had overnight to kind of um, cure. And you can see some of the detail with the windows. The model kit itself is very, very high quality, at least the, uh, the primary hull. And one of the things I want to be careful not to do is put on too much tape, uh, paint, excuse me, because I don't want the detail to be uh, filled in. See the windows on the side, those are large enough that they're not going to be filled in, but you see these windows? Let's see, that would be what? C-deck? And then there are more windows below those. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna light the registry numbers. And you can see where the impulse engines are gonna go. Now, when it comes to the painting, <clears throat> I was thinking about how I wanted to paint the ship. And I use, I like the Rust-Oleum, the Chrome, the metallic finish on the inside, and this kind of allows the light to kind of bounce around and reflect. Um, what I was thinking, the way this paint looks on models, it looks really cool. And when you look at her on screen, she's got kind of like a silvery, gray, silver kind of look to her. So we're gonna use this on the inside. And once it's all set, um, I want to see how it looks when it's all cured. And we, I'm thinking about doing the outside as well in the same color. And once the aztec is on, I think it's going to look pretty cool when it comes to like with the way she looks on screen. Um, I think that'll look pretty wild. But again, she. Uh, She's got that, like a silvery kind of color. And I think it will act pretty good like that. When it comes to some of the clear parts, um, these parts of the nacelles are gonna be blue. So I'm pretty sure everything on this tree is gonna be blue. Let me show you guys the actual, the nacelles. So, you can see where they're gonna go. This piece will go there. This one will go there. And then we've got this piece for the back. And we've got that one sliver that's gonna go in the back along the edge. And that's gonna be for the um, the blue. Because on the side of the cell, it's actually blue. Now when we look at the, the Bessard collectors, um, make sure I get them where they're gonna look. I think they're gonna go this way. But they're gonna be red. So we got the Bassard collectors that are gonna be red as well as the impulse engines. And again, hopefully you can see how they're gonna look. Let's see, let's line them up. Kinda go like that. So we've got the red on the Bessard collectors and the impulse engines. And it looks like we have the, the impulse crystals. And we've got the deflector dish. And the deflector dish is gonna go in there. Looks like one of these are going to be the bridge. The thing is, it doesn't have instructions, so when it comes to trying to figure out what's going on, there's, it, it, there's no instructions to follow. It would have been nice just to confirm my, you know, my suspicions. You can see how the Bassard collector is going to go together. 
and we have the clear parts that are going to go on and then one of them just kind of goes on to the back. So we definitely know these are going to be blue. And what I'm going to use is we're going to use the, uh, the tester spray and it's going to be the clear blue. <clears throat> And when it comes to the, the Bessard collectors and the impulse engines, those are the only things that are going to be red. Again, there are lights down there and I'm not sure what these are all for. I think some of them are gonna go on top of the nacelles. Pulse crystals. We're going to go right there. Okay, so it had some time to dry. Hopefully you guys can see that. I love the reflective paint. It does such a good job. And you know, I was thinking, I think it looks really good. And picture this color with the Aztec over it. The way it looks on screen, I think I want to actually try putting this on the outside. And we'll see how that looks. So I'm going to flip over all the pieces and we're actually going to spray the outside. Okay, so it's been a little while and it's nice and dry and it looks pretty pretty cool and I'm thinking that once the Aztec and decals are going to be covering it um, it's going to get the effect that I want it's gonna be nice and reflective on the inside yeah I'm really fond of the rust-oleum you can see the detail we got the phaser arrays we have all the windows and all the way back to the, uh, the impulse engines. Okay, so I had overnight and I'm, I think, I think the color is going to work out really nice. I'm not liking all the pollen that got stuck in it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have to actually sand them down. I don't know if they're noticeable on camera, but you can see because it was very windy when I painted, 
And I don't know about where you are, but in New England, the pollen is just going crazy, falling off the trees and flying around in the air. And you can see where the spots where the, uh, the pollen stuck to the paint. But I think for the most part, um, maybe a light sanding, I'm not sure. If anything, to tone down the shine. Because the way she looks on screen, she looks very, well, almost like she's chrome. It's the, it's the real reflective silver. So, maybe just a tiny, tiny sand just to bring down the, uh, the glare. But overall, I think it's going to work out good. And it's going to really reflect the inside. I love the chrome. And check out the bottom where the uh, impulse crystals are going to go and a sansedone when it comes to do these parts I'm going to do them all by hand because for me it'll be easier to do it by hand than to mask them off and try to get it right so we're going to do the impulse crystals I'm going to light block them then I'm going to put the blue in and with the sansedone we're going to do the same thing we're going to light block it and then we're gonna leave it where the edges have light. And I think the only place that we're actually gonna put a light is for the, uh, the registry markings on the bottom of the primary hull. See, one of the things that I'm not too crazy about this model, let me show you, is that, see how thick the wall is? The outer rim of the saucer section. And this fits in fit in for you guys like that and the problem that I'm gonna have is when I have to drill out the windows I'm gonna have to drill that much deeper because this this is about a quarter of an inch thick and I'm gonna have to drill down and then in and see if I can get some of the um, fiber optic for the the beacons port and starboard so that <clears throat> that's going to be a problem that's one of the things I'm not too crazy about them the way the kit is designed but it is what it is and I have to deal with it and it's got kind of a little bit of a like a gap but that's okay when it's in it it probably disappear but hopefully you guys can see the the windows at least the windows are all there so what I'm gonna do is before the model goes together let me put the top back before we even think about putting the model together I gotta glue um, drill out all the windows and I'm hoping that when we drill them this section going in isn't gonna just block them again you know you guys know what I mean so we got the, the drill, we'll drill all the windows and then before you know it, this is gonna come in and this is gonna settle down and it's gonna block all the windows. So something that I'm gonna have to think about if uh, that's gonna be the case, I'm thinking might have to use fiber optics because the windows have to be lit along the edge of the saucer section but this is going to be pretty fun because we're moving on to my favorite part of a build is lighting the actual model and that to me that's the best part and you can see the um it's the pollen really got everywhere let me see where the deflector dish is going to go i'm um, going to check out the The nacelles look really cool. Let me see if I can match it up with one. You can see where the uh, the sard collector is going to go on. Yeah, these look. <laughs> I think they look fantastic. I'm just so happy to have this as a model. 
I wish I had my own 3D printer. That'd be pretty great. But until I do, and you can see this is gonna be the, looks like it's gonna be the port one. <clears throat> and speaking of in the cells, let me show you guys. I put, I put just about two and a half coats. The last coat was really light. And you can see that uh, it painted up really nicely. I love the um, blue. And I like this, this spray enamel from Testers. Because I do have the blue paint and I could have used the paint gun, but it's not clear. This is the clear, clear enamel as well as the red. Let me show you guys the red. The, the label got destroyed and anyway. See where the we did on the red parts, the Bassard collectors. And again, you can see all of the the pollen. And this is gonna go, I believe, like that. And the way they kind of fit into the secondary hull gonna go like basically it's gonna go gonna go like this and we're gonna put the um, the lights in and we've got the full Aztec and decals for the ship so it's gonna look really good at least I hope it's gonna look really good because the ship is gonna be covered in Aztec -ing. Uh, let me show you the back Interesting as well, the way this model is engineered, we've got the shuttle bay door that's going to go in the back like this. That's a separate piece altogether. And then we got the bottom of the ship. That's another entirely different piece. And it's going to go together on the shuttle bay. It's going to help hold it in place. So that's how that section is going to go, the secondary hull. And when it comes to the nacelles, uh, not the nacelle, the saucer pylon, um, you can see this structure is going to go like this. And when it comes to the uh, the saucer pylon, she's got a pretty meaty neck. <laughs> so, it's really thick. And the way the back is gonna fit, they've got the saucer pylon coming in off of the, um, the back of the, where the impulse engines are. So let me just kinda put that together real quick for you. And this is a really, She's really beefy back there. And I love the design of the ship. I know there are a lot of people out there that don't care for it. Um, I just, I like the design. I think it's really cool. I think she's gorgeous. And this video, my friend, concludes with the, um, the painting. Everything is ready now. All we got to do now is we'll do detail work and we'll start to put it together. But the fun part's coming up. We're gonna do the lights. And in my next video, we're gonna start adding the lights and uh, really bringing her to life. So my friends, thank you for watching. And until the next video in this series, I'll talk to you soon.